So winter is here and all of the animals that will be inside are now inside and I decided to do a full on, ignore that shooting, it's almost deer season, people get ready. So I'm going to show you guys all my animals that are inside and here's the pond right now. As you can see, it's you know pretty cold out, there's some icicles, there was huge bit of snow on the ground a few days ago. And turtles in here, my three rider sliders, two midland painteds, and one northern map turtle. They are in here right now. You can see Phelps right there, just kind of laying on the bottom. They're going to be broomating, and uh, that's basically what they're going to be doing for the next few months. So why don't we head inside the turtle room, and I'll show you guys around. Hold on a minute. Oh, hi. I didn't hear you come in. All right. Let me show you around. So, these are all my enclosures. Most of them are in this room here. Let's, let's close the door so it's just us and the turtles. So, we have the majority of the animals in here. We have a few in my room and you just saw some of them that are outside. But, top enclosure for the first tortoise table. These are three of my four Russian tortoises. I have two males and one female in here. Now, before anyone says anything, I do have another big female and she's right here in this enclosure. You guys saw her a few videos back. I said that she wasn't doing too great and that she had a respiratory infection. I got her to the vet. We got some medicine. I've been giving her her medicine every day and now look at her. Um, bright eyes, eating, still sleeping a little bit more than what I'd like to see but um, doing a lot better. So once she's better, I'm going to move her back in here. And then this male right here, this is the only male that's actually like a breedable male. My other male is too small. He's not, he's what you would consider a dud. He doesn't breed and when he does it's not successful. So this is the only one that actually would have like the bullying breeding activity or like you know biting the other females. He's the only one that would stress a female out. So when she's better I'm gonna you know, change the substrate on everything, clean it. But I'm moving him back on his own and then that girl is gonna come back in here and that's where they're gonna be for a while until next summer and then they're gonna be outside in their huge pen that is back there. Now underneath the first Russian tortoise, this is the Slakata tortoise. This is Big Ben, he's a pretty cool dude. As you can see he made a mess with his collard greens. Uh, this is his enclosure, it's just him. Um, this is the only Slakata, or the only you know tortoise that's in here. You can't really cohabitate anything with slicatas. It's not too recommended. But um, we have a substrate of um, organic peat moss and eco earth. Helps to hold that humidity for him. Because when I got him, he had that little bit of pyramiding, as you can see. But if you look, you can kind of see the new growth. And it's much smoother than before. So that is exactly what I like to see. And he also has gotten much bigger as well. Super cool dude. I'm going to keep him around for quite a while. Let's get a good uh, full shot of his enclosure there. We have a nice 26 watt 10.0 UVB. Then we have a 100 watt heat lamp right there. Same with the Russian tortoises. The Russians up here actually have two UVBs. But um, pretty cool dude. And I love Sakata so much. I want to get another one. But until then... He's going to be the only child for the Sakatas. Now, we already went over her, but we're going to go over a little bit more. So, this is kind of like the rehab enclosure. Like I said, that one male, Hank, he this was his only enclosure. I had to separate him. He was being too mean. So, this is her enclosure now. As you can see, doing so much better than before. She is so much better. Um, I don't know what got her sick and the other ones didn't get sick, but whatever it was... Um, I really think it's taking a turn, so taking a turn for the better. Now, we're getting into the turtles. We just cover the tortoises. See the turtles. Now, first and foremost, <clears throat> this guy is the original Eastern Box out of all the Eastern Box turtles. This is Turbo. He's a male Eastern Box turtle, and he is in here by himself because he is too aggressive with the other males and the females. So, you know, he was bullying them being a little meanie so he's in his baby pool set up for right now and things are always changing in the reptile room so um he's not going to be in this enclosure forever as well that enclosure might not even be here a little bit but he has 
uh, organic peat moss substrate as well. It helps hold humidity. Um, I would recommend using EcoWorth rather than organic peat moss, except organic peat moss is so much cheaper. So um, that's what is going on here. A little, little bit of plants, some decor. But a uh, super cool dude. Love his personality. And um, yeah, Turbo. Such a cool guy. Now, to the left, I don't want to make this feel rushed, but you know, not a whole lot to say about like one turtle. In here we have a huge variety. We have a grab bag, if you will, of turtles. Um, we have two fish in here as well. This is a 180 gallon stock tank, as you can see. Pretty big, six feet long. Let's see, two feet deep and two feet wide. Maybe two and a half feet deep. In here we have one Mississippi map turtle, a northern map turtle, a northern diamondback terrapin, a peninsula cooter, and three eastern spiny soft shells, and a Chinese golden thread. So there's a lot. Now you need to know, the soft shells, they stay in the sand area, which is over here. It's just this area that's all sand for them. They hide out in there a lot. They don't really go much else in the enclosure. The northern map is a male, and he's only about that big. All right, so the, the male northern map um, is actually only about that big. Uh, he's a male, so he's not going to get much bigger than that. So he's not taking up a whole lot of space. Um, there is some controversy. There's about how much space an aquatic turtle needs. Basically, what it is, is for every inch of turtle shell, is 10 gallons of water. So if you have a 5-inch turtle, 50 gallons of water. Now, the thing that people argue about is what happens if you add another turtle? Like, what if you have a 5-inch turtle and then you add a 4-inch turtle? Is that 80 gallons of water? Or is that just like an additive extra gallon inch. So basically what I decided to do is get the biggest turtle, which I have in here is six inches long, it's Hurricane, the female Mississippi map turtle. You get six inches, so that's 60 gallons. And then for every other turtle in here, for every turtle other than Hurricane, you add 10 gallons. And that is what I would consider an accurate measurement of a spacing of a turtle can have. Now there are some exceptions, like you don't want to overcrowd it, even though there may be some. I mean, even when it comes to, to younger turtles, like you don't want, even though this may be able to fit three huge adult peninsula cooters, so like you can get that mealworm, doesn't mean that it should be done. It's, you just kind of have to have that experience and have to know how to act. And I mean, they're obviously healthy, they're all doing great, so um, I'm not too worried about it. But if Cooper, can get that meal when I put on the dock. Oh, almost, almost. So close. But uh, the fish in here, as we're watching Cooper trying to get the the mealworm, there's a really, a really big, a huge pleco in here. What the heck gave up? He, the pleco is about that big. The pleco. Some say you don't want them in turtles. Some say it's fine. I've no, I've never had trouble with plecos with turtles before, um, but I am looking for a home for the pleco. So if you guys are concerned about that, just know I'm looking for a home for the pleco. He's just too big. He got huge out in the pond. But uh, next, this is probably my favorite enclosure next to the stock tank. This is the 29 gallon common musk turtle um, slash molly and platy breeding enclosure. Now some of you may or may not know goldfish and rosy reds are not acceptable they're not good feeder fish at all they are mass produced almost 100 percent of the time they carry parasites they're just filthy really disgusting fish they're also not live bearing which is part of the reason mollies and platies they're live bearing fish and they're not mass produced because you know you don't have a single fish that lays hundreds of eggs so mollies and platies are the best kind of feeder fish and I have them with the musk turtles because the musk turtles can't catch them they're not fish eaters um, which is why they're still in here but my goal is that they reproduce and then once this tank gets so overstocked I just throw them in the stock tank and then they can have a quick little fish meal let's go into the nitty-gritty of this enclosure this is probably my most self-sustaining enclosure because I've selected 
animals and different kinds of filters and stuff to really get every part that you need for this enclosure. This has been here for two months, two and a half months, and I've yet to have to clean it or do a water change. The only thing I've had to do is fill it back with water once it evaporates. So let's come on in close and I'll show you what we got. So as you can see, we got some mollies and platies. We got four, I think they're called sunburst platies. Got a marbled molly, silver molly, a um, dawn platy, and then back there we have a Dalmatian molly. Um, they're all females except for that guy there, the Dalmatian molly. And then throughout the tank, you can kind of see down here, we have some babies already. Um, to have some bigger, smaller, there's three or four babies that I can see of right now. I think there might be more. There's a lot of hiding spots. I know a fry net is suggested, but there's so much hiding spots. I'm not too concerned about it. And also, all of these uh, sunburst platies, they're all pregnant as well. As you can see, they're really fat. Then we have our two musk turtles. Common musk turtles, about a year and a half old. Um, I call them Tom and Jerry. I don't know if they're male or female, but whatever they are, they're either both male or both female. I kind of think they're both female, but... Um, that's just my that's my thought and then in here we also have somewhere I don't see them we have a uh, what is it crap a clown loach we have a smaller clown loach and we have two ghost shrimp which when I feed them here I'm gonna put a little bit of fish flakes in here for the, the mollies and platies I hope the ghost shrimp come out as well so you can see them um, they all have an important role in keeping this tank clean. The loach picks up all the stuff in the sand, which is why you don't see debris sitting on the sand, as does the mollies and platies, but mostly the loach, and same with the uh, ghost shrimp. So, throw a little bit of food for the musk turtles. I have these sinking musk turtle pellets right here from ZooMed. Great food for mud and musk turtles. But, um,. Yeah, we're gonna wait a little bit and see if we can find some that come out. Okay, so if I can, I'm gonna try to get all the soft shells, but I know y'all wanna see all the animals. I'm gonna try my best to pick up the soft shells. Here's Shadow, the female northern diamondback. But uh, there's one right here. I'm gonna try to grab. They tend to jet off. Oh, is this Darwin? It is Darwin, the big girl. All right. So this is Darwin, hold on, this is Darwin, female, eastern spiny soft shell. She has gotten super huge as well. She's actually, I'd say, just about the same size as the, the Mississippi map, and she's obviously, she is the feistiest. You go back and you watch my most popular video, she got me good and it bled a little bit. So there she is, oh, she's going to get me again, but uh, looking great. So we're gonna release her, and I there's another soft shot right here that I'm pretty sure. Oh, here, here it is. Pretty sure it's the other female, the smaller one. Yeah, it is. Here she is, smaller female. I had a name for her. one of you guys suggested a really good name, but I forgot it, so I'll put it up on the screen right now. But uh, here she is, smaller. Um, have a little bit of scar here from a previous turtle that I had to get rid of for being too mean. But she's doing great. And if I can find the male. Oh, here he is. He, it's it's going to be a challenge to get this guy. Because he's fast and he's not in the sand. I can get him to go in the sand. Oh, here's the golden thread. You guys didn't see. Getting big as well. Big female golden thread. Looking amazing. She's gotten so much bigger, actually. Wow. But, uh... See, I know the soft shell's back here somewhere. Alright, well... I think that might be it. The... Wait. No. Is that him? There's no way. Did he sneak in the sand? No, it's not. Okay. Alright, well. I don't know, he's right here. What the heck? 
flapjack. The male eastern spiny. One of my favorites. This is um, honestly my favorite uh, kind of soft shell. The male, the spotted pattern they have. This guy is one of my favorite aquatics for sure. I love him so much. And his name is Flapjack. Because Pancake was too... It's it's just taken, okay? If you name a... Don't name your soft shell Pancake. If you do, that's completely fine because you didn't know. But now you do. Okay, if you're going to name a... If you're going to name a... If you're gonna name a soft shell something, make it original. Okay, it's pancake. Don't not pancake. Waffle would be better. All right, so we found a ghost shrimp. Just so you guys can see that they're still in there. I know there's another one in here somewhere. Not exactly sure where it's at. And the clown loach, he's so skittish. There's no way. Like I've seen him flash in and out, but he's just he's so skittish. There's no way we can film him. All right, so. That's the aquatics, and then we have this entire system here. These are eastern box turtle enclosures. This was a tortoise table, but I've converted it to a turtle table. Um, double decker. I make use of as much space as I can, so when you run out of floor space, that's when you start building up. So that's what I've done. We're going to start up here. We have a 100 watt UVB, or I'm sorry, that's a heat lamp. This is our Amazing UVB, 26 watt uh, strip light. Pretty cool, gives a lot of UVB. But let's go ahead and meet the inhabitants. Um, but first and foremost, this plant is actually pumpkin plant. I fed them pumpkin because it's you know fall and people get rid of pumpkins. And some of the seeds decided to start growing. So I'm just gonna let those grow and we're gonna see what happens. But starting with the first male in here, this is bear, this is Male Eastern Box, pretty cool dude. This guy has a story. I know I've been saying that for a while. It's a super gross story, so make sure to stay tuned to learn about this guy and how I got him. Um, but I actually am keeping him. I'm hanging on to him, even though he's a male, because he breaks the common stereotype that male box turtles have red eyes. So he's very clearly a male. He has an indent right here. His cloaca is pretty far out compared to a female. And as you can see, his eyes are not red at all. I don't know. There you go. They're not red at all. They're more brown. But he's a smaller dude, and his name is Bear because of the bear-like paw print on the back of his carapace. Next, we're going to meet Elda. This girl, super cool. I'm convinced she's the oldest in the group. Her shell is so rounded. Her It's so eroded from naturally natural erosion that you can barely see her growth rings but this is a female eastern box elda as you can see pretty cool girl you can by the way you can go back and watch um all the introduction videos on how i got these turtles um i got all these easterns this year and i did a video on how i got all of them so you can go back and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel but uh pretty cool girl super super awesome such an amazing personality she's so outgoing um and she loves people so let's move on. We have let's see two more, three more in this enclosure. Over here, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring her over. This is Ziggy. Ziggy, another female Eastern box. As you can see, pretty cool girl. Have some uh, substrate on her on her shell here. Eco Earth, by the way. Uh, she is the mother of two babies that I have upstairs. So she's super cool. Look at those patterns. Um, really amazing turtle. I uh, love her so much. But uh, she was trying to brewmate, so I had to wake her up. And I'm just going to keep soaking her with warm soaks, and we'll get her awake and ready. Now, in the hut over here, which was sent to me by a viewer, so thank you so much to him. Um, if you want to send something, check out the description below, and the P.O. Box address is down there. So, send something there. This is BB-8. A juvenile dunger female eastern box a uh, pretty cool thing about her is she has this gnarly scar on her shell this this is a really old scar her shell obviously cracked somehow but turtles heal from the inside out so I'll try to bring her over here so as you can see she is doing just well or just fine the inside is completely healed over it's not showing her insides at all 
and she's an amazing personality as well. All these turtles, by the way, get an amazing outdoor enclosure. It's it's my favorite enclosure. Has like a 250 gallon wading pond, uh, creek area, many hiding spots. But uh, here's the fan favorite. This is arguably one of the coolest eastern box turtles out there. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the coolest eastern box turtle on YouTube, and I'm not just saying that. This is Frostbite. Male eastern box turtle. See his pot. If it wasn't so dirty, you could really see his amazing colors. But look at the back of his shell. See the the radiating pattern there? I'm a sucker for radiated Easterns. But um but look at his, his face there. Try to focus on that. I don't know how good the light is. But uh, let's try getting white light here. Look at his forearms. They're actually they're white. Almost like an albino. Now he is he has like an orange-ish tint on some of them, but when he's not dirty, and you can really see the white, you know, underneath his chin there, it's so cool. And I don't know if the light even does justice. It's so cool. Not only does he have an amazing, an amazingly rare pattern for an Eastern, which is white. Easterns usually don't have white because where Easterns are native, there's no reason to have white color. It's not a good camouflage. Um, but he has that amazing uh, sought out after radiated pattern on his shell and such a cool turtle and his back legs also have color which is pretty pretty cool for males a lot of males don't have color on the back legs but we're gonna go ahead and set him down over here him and Elda have bred so if she lays eggs it's gonna be his so those are gonna be some valuable babies but down here we have the second Eastern box turtles now these, all the Easterns are a group. They're just separate because I don't have an enclosure big enough to house all of them at once. So right here, first and foremost, grabbing the attention is Tiki. This is the dominant male out of the group. Um, a lot of people really love him as well. He has a lot of personality, but a super cool dude. Um, he's also a, a really pretty big Eastern. He has this really cool flaring of the back of the shell that some Easterns get. Some do, some don't. Um, I, I personally believe it's some kind of locality thing, but he is from South Carolina while others are from Texas and um, the northern parts of the state. Now this dude, like I said, <clears throat> like, like I said, is the, the dominant of the, the group. He's the biggest, so he is the biggest personality, and he's such a cool turtle, and this dude was escaping so much, which is why I have that board back there. So Tiki, uh, really, really, really cool turtle. I love him so much. I love all, I, Easterns are my favorite turtle species. Don't tell him I said that. But, um, yeah. And then we have, look around a little bit. Here we have Mr. P. Now Mr. P, short for Mr. Perfect, because he has a perfect shell. Now all my Easterns, they either have a scar like Tiki does right here or an extra or split scoop. Mr. Perfect has a perfect shell, no scars at all, and he was that you consider it A plus turtle. Now Mr. P came in a pair with another female we're gonna meet here in a second, but when he's, here, I'm gonna get some water here, put on his shell. Look at that shell when it's, when it's nice and wet like that. I mean, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous turtle shot right there. Um, these are all part of a breeding group I'm sure you figure that out. I do have two babies from this group upstairs, and hopefully we'll be getting more uh, this year. So, Mr. P, super cool, great personality, and uh, Tiki wants to wet my finger. I'm trying to get that. I Okay, guys, the worst bite I've ever gotten was from Turbo, and it hurt so bad, I swear. I was preparing myself to have a chunk of missing flesh off my finger. Not just skin, flesh. Didn't happen, luckily, but man, it was close. Here we have the biggest female in the group. And she's super cool because not only is she the biggest, she also has a super cool pattern on her shell. Um, back here, get some more water on there. It's cool because the color... It gets dark up here and it slowly fades down to a lighter color. But this is Brooke. She is, like I said, the biggest female out of the group. 
uh, great person. These all have great personalities, which is why box turtles, I love them so much. But there she is, such a cool turtle. Tiki's looking at her. But uh, Brooke, Brooke and Mr. P came in a group or a pair, and I'm so lucky to have her. I love her so much. But like I said, with the shells, she has a like a weird warped scoot right here. That could be a scar of some sort. So. Yeah, and then there's a few others. Here's one right here. This is Jackie. Now, um, Jackie is a Malaysian box turtle, not an Eastern box turtle. And her shell, she's got all this weird, like, crud on her shell because she buries in the mud. And then she goes in the water and then it sticks on her shell. So her shell's not always muddy like that. But she's a Malaysian box turtle. Now, I do have plans to make her her own enclosure. I just need to move around some stuff first, but like I said when I was putting them in here, she just needs to hang in there for a little bit longer, then she get can get an amazing, uh, what hopefully will be a paludarium uh, enclosure just for Malaysian box turtles. So she's the only Malaysian I have right now. Uh, this is not an idealistic enclosure for her, but like I said, she just has to hang in there just, just for a little bit. Now we have one more female in here. Yep, there she is. This is Cleo. Cleo I got in a pair with Tiki. Here she is. She has actually gotten... Hold on. Oh, I had to sneeze. She has gotten so much more personable uh, over the month of being inside. She was super skittish. She would always hide in her shell. But now look at her. I mean, she's so much more friendly when she gets inside and she gets more one-on-one -on -one human attention. But Cleo, she's the smallest breeding sized Eastern that we have in the group. So, not a lot of eggs will come from her, but hey, any egg is a win in my eyes. And she also has some pretty cool patterns as well. But uh, yeah, there she is, looking great. That's the, the last turtle for this enclosure. And that'll be the last a turtle for the room now before you go we still have some animals upstairs so don't think that we're finished yet but right before that i want to mention justin the party cat we don't get to see him very often but when we do it's always it's it's such a victory to get to see him it's like a little cameo but justin the party cat he is permanent resident he's what 11 years old and we pet him all 11 years super cool dude i pet him but my hands are all turtly right now but before we leave to go upstairs let's do a quick little panor panorama of the room so you guys guys so you all get a full view of the turtle room when you're done with that make sure you get some cooper footage he's got his hand out Alright guys, so now we're back upstairs. Not a lot of animals in here, but I mean we still have four animals, which is more than what some people have. I don't know. But in here, we have the baby eastern box turtle tank. Now this is a nursery, and I have some things to say about this real quick. Now first, you want to have a visual barrier. I had a construction paper visual barrier around there, but it came down and I haven't fixed it yet. But I'm going to wait because I have some adjustments have to do with the tank but we're gonna find them first and I'll as I'm looking for them I'll talk about their enclosure um, so I'm gonna have to redo their hides because this log here and then the cork the cork round that was their their main hides especially you know this one is alright I haven't had any problems with that but um, this one box turtle keeps flipping himself over on his back and he can't right himself so so many times I'll be in here and I'll look and then he's flipped over or can't right himself back up oh here he is I see him he's coming out so this is the troublemaker himself here he is and he flips himself over and I'm worried that if I leave the house and he's flipped himself over he won't be able to right himself put him in the light but 
there he is. Uh, this is uh, these are Ziggy's babies. Um, only two of them. She laid four eggs. One of them was a dud right off the bat, and one of them died throughout um, development. I'm not sure why, but these two are the only ones that survived. Now this is Garbanzo, and um, we have to find his sibling, which is somewhere. And these guys bury in the ground so well, which is why you don't want super deep soil because there's no way you'll find them if you have super deep soil. So we're gonna go ahead and cut until I can find them. Okay, so this is Chickpea, Garbanzo's sibling. About the same size. Uh, she has three missing scutes, which makes her a little, a little smaller, and she also is darker in color. But um, they're both doing pretty well. I've had no issues with them so far. Eating like you have no idea. They will eat anything. But um, yep. These are the first two turtles I've ever hatched out. It was a great experience. And you guys should go back and watch the video of them hatching. I'll put that in the link description. So make sure you go back and watch that. But the hides, I need to do different hides or something of that sort because they're just getting into too much trouble with these round cork, cork hides. Now over here, to all of you guys who like lizards and you're like, oh, you should get a bearded dragon. You should get a monitor. You should get a crested gecko. I have. I have two crested geckos. So this is my 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 two. These are my hopefully breeding pair cresties. Um, not the best way to keep a tank in a little shelf like that because I have to pull it out to mist it every other day. But I'm gonna go ahead and see. All right, so I actually made this high like this so you can see it on purpose. Look back here. This is Charles, the male crested gecko. He's in his hide back there as you can see. Um, when I made this, I foamed these like this on purpose. Now you could put plants in there and I did that so I could see how well the roots of the plants were doing and if I made it into a hide, you could see the geckos in the hide which is pretty cool. So that's Charles and he has a really long tail. I mean it's like, like say the lizard's like that big, the tail is like, like that. I mean it's, it's a long tail. Charles, he's a pretty cool dude. I actually traded if you guys remember my female Central American wood turtle, I traded her for Charles, which was a really great trade. And then I have a feeling Ponyo, yeah, Ponyo hides in the screen divider. And it's super annoying because I have to be really careful. And like, see this glass right here? I have this glass here to hold all the soil in. She hides in between. So. It's always annoying to try to get her out because she's afraid and she gets super moody. But all right, so this is Ponyo. These are not the most tame geckos in the world. Mine aren't, so don't expect them to behave really well. But this is a female crested gecko. I've had her since she was a baby. You can go back and watch her introduction video. It's an old one, but you can go back and watch. Wow, she's, I guess, not the best at climbing either. But um, while I have this up, I'm just gonna miss their tank. I missed it yesterday, but it doesn't hurt the mist again. So I'm hoping I'll get some babies out of these two. I have no idea if she laid in here or not. Um, I'm not actively trying to breed them. But when I do, that's when I'll make an actual lay box. She can lay in here, and if need be, they could hatch as well. So um, if I wake up and there's a baby in there, I wouldn't be surprised. But uh, you know what? I'm going to miss this tank after I say this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. That's all my turtles inside. Now, I know we didn't get to all of them that are outside because they're brew mating. But... You can imagine three red siders, two midland painteds, and then a small female northern map. Um, they were out in the pond. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to help support all of this craziness, check out the description below. I have an address for a PO box. You can send stuff there. 
I also have three Amazon wish lists, which consists of a lot of supplies that you can donate towards the aquatic turtles, box turtles, or tortoises. So, uh, thank you, look, thank you so much for watching. I said that a lot, but I can't thank you enough. And have a great day. Welcome to Chili's.